Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I definitely love the Grinch story. And I know it's a cute story, but you know, there's so many amazing biblical principles that you can find in a story like the Grinch. Um, And don't get me wrong, I know that Christmas is a time of gathering around with family, friends. It's about, you know, getting presents, the perfect present for the people we love, our kids and, and our family, etc., cetera, and, and going to parties and, and, you know, tacking on the extra pounds with all the sugar, the cookies. But have no fear, January is almost here. Fasting and prayer is on, it's on its way. We'll shed all those pounds off again. But when you think about this little girl named Cindy Lou, She lived this life of constant presence, 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 and presence. And and there was something wrong that she came to a conclusion and said, you know what? Christmas has to be more than just presence. And um, she noticed that her community misinterpreted the meaning of Christmas. And I think that, that that also happens to the church. That happens to you as a believer. You know, for us, Christmas is every day. It's not just in December. And so Cindy Lou decides that why is it that no one's reaching that one that's on top of that hill? That angry, bitter, resentful, hateful, hurt person who has revenge on their heart. Why is it that no one wants to reach that individual? And so if you've ever watched the movie, you know what she does. She starts interviewing uh, different accounts with different people that have had with the Grinch. And they all start sharing the story. But what, what really hit her home is that at one point that the Grinch was a boy who had experienced some severe pain and hurt and really put him in a place of what he ended up becoming. You know, I really believe that most people become a product of their, of their past. And, uh, and sometimes uh, because we ourselves also get busy in this season like Christmas, trying to find the perfect gift, you know, working extra hours just to make a little extra money for Christmas, that we can also misinterpret the, the true meaning of this season right now that, that we're experiencing, and, and it's Jesus. He's honestly the reason for this season, and I know that may sound cliche, he's the reason for this season, but it's getting a revelation, a fresh revelation, and a personal revelation for you about the fact that Jesus He was sent by God who loved you and me so much, who was willing to not give you a present, but to give you his presence. You see, because when there's presence, like I said earlier in worship, there's healing. When there's presence of God, there's transformation. When there's the presence of God, he can literally change a person in a moment. I mean, never underestimate the presence of God. And never underestimate what you can do through God and with God. Here you have this young little girl, a child, who finally comes to the conclusion, you know what, man, I need to change the perception of my community. And she does. And I want you to know that it just takes one person to change the perception of your tribe. It takes one person, because I know that sometimes, some of us, the only time that we'll actually go win souls or reach people with the love of God is only if we're in a group with people, which is probably wisdom, it's smart. But God doesn't just want you to roll with a tribe. God wants you to have personal revival where you know that wherever you go, he goes with you. And when he goes with you, guess what? His presence can change the person that is ugly, that's mean-hearted, that's that's, uh, filled with pain, filled with hurt. Whatever it is, God can do amazing things through one person. And that one person can literally change the course of a life for the rest of their life. You know what? Uh... We know the story that Cindy Lou was constantly rejected by the Grinch. And I really believe that the reason that, that the church in general, the, the body of Christ, doesn't share their faith is because we are literally gripped with fear of rejection. I get it. Who wants to be rejected? Nobody. I don't think anyone here likes rejection. 
But there's something, there's an anointing, there's, a, there's something powerful about being rejected. Obviously, Jesus said, if they persecuted me, if they rejected me, they're going to reject you. But, but no, this is for righteousness sake. Rejoice when you're being rejected. It's an awesome thing when you're being rejected. However, I want to take you to a verse in the Bible, and I want to just unpack some things because I'm, 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 very, I'm very touched by the story of, of the Grinch. And once again, I, say, I know this is a cute story, but beyond cute, let's, let's, let's take out the principles of how is it that this girl was willing to give up presents to be in the presence of somebody. It's pretty amazing. It's an awesome story because I believe right now there are people that you're afraid. There's someone that you've been afraid to reach that may be contemplating suicide right now. There may be someone that you're afraid to reach for whatever reason that, that is at the, at the very point of giving up on life. There may be someone right now that just needs a little bit of encouragement right now. But God needs you. God needs me. And if we can really begin to get the real meaning of Christmas, if we can go ahead and listen, here's the, here's the, here's the goal. Let's have both. Let's have the presence, but let's make sure we have the presence of God. And I want to bring God's presence into our homes this Christmas. I want to bring us back into focus of the why. That's why I'm doing this whole series called, If Not You, Then Who? Then who? Who's going to reach that person in your family? Are you waiting for someone else maybe who has Christ in your family? Like, oh, you know, my grandma who's been saved for 50 years, six, she'll get him. No, maybe that's you who needs to be the who. Are you with me today? Yeah. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 19 because here you have a scripture. I'm going to read you scriptures that Jesus communicated to his disciples. And I want you to know that with every single purpose that God gives you, God equips you for. There's nothing that you can do that he hasn't already equipped you with. And he over and over again, he begins to talk to his disciples about how he's equipped them. And he tells a story in Luke 19 verse 13. He says, and he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds. Another version says, and he delivered to them money. So basically, he, he, he calls his 10 servants, just like you and I. He called you. I love that song, man. I was lost. I was lost. I was lost. Oh, my God. That just hit my heart this morning right? And now I'm found in Christ Jesus. And when you've been found, now we become his. And, and then he equips you. He says, now I'm going to give you something. I'm going to pour something into your life. I, I pour in purpose. I pour in destiny. I, I, pour, I pour in passion in you. But now here's what I, he says to them. So he said unto them, occupy till I what? He says, I want you to stay busy but I want you to be busy with healthy busy because there is such thing as being unhealthy with our busyness and there is such thing with being, in being healthy with the busy. Here in this story, Jesus is saying, hey, listen, I want you to be occupied until I get back. I want you to be occupied with my mission. And so here's what happens with us. We're most often, we are preoccupied with worry. We are preoccupied with bills. We are preoccupied with family problems. We're preoccupied with work problems. We're preoccupied with where we're going to eat after service. We're preoccupied with all kinds of things. And Jesus is talking to his disciples. Now stay with me, okay? He's talking to his disciples this message of being the hope to the world. Like the whole purpose of the church is to be the hope to the, hope to the world. That's the whole purpose of, of, of the church. That's it. For God so loved the world that he said they need hope. This world needs hope. This is the season where we bring hope to people. And trust me, you're going to love to hear what's going to happen today. It's going to be awesome. So he says, I want you to be occupied till I come back. So many times I think that Christians think that being occupied means that I have to lose my life completely. Meaning that I can't have a job, you know, I can't, have, I can't own a home, I can't. That's what most people think when they come to Jesus. Like, I don't want to be that kind of Christian. Like, I want to be close to Jesus, but not so close that I have to sacrifice everything. Right? It's true. There's many of them that come to this church, and every church in America, they walk in, they walk out. I want to be close enough to Jesus, but not so close that you have to demand me to do something, to be occupied with something that you want back from me. 
Me explico. Am I explaining myself? And so we're preoccupied. Think about it. You know, I've always asked myself the question, why is it that women are so darn anointed at leading? Have you ever asked yourself that question, lady? Like, why am I so good at leading? It's so true. I'm always like, this has been the pet peeve of mine. I've probably been saying this for 21 years. Like, why can't the men always be the leaders? Ah! But while I was studying this mess, I'm like, it makes total sense now. Because God started with the woman, <laughs> right, named Eve. And he said to her, and from you will come a child. And he will be the Savior. And so she embraced, she was now occupied with the mission of God. But then check this out. But then her husband, Joseph, also became preoccupied with God's mission. Why do I share this with you? It is, it is very, very scary to be a Christian and to be so close to Jesus, but yet not be in relationship with him. Stay with me. Judas was the perfect proof of this. He was hearing messages every weekend. He was going to worship services every week, singing songs, lifting hands. Right? He occasionally was serving in some capacity. But he was so close to Jesus that he was preoccupied with stealing from Jesus. Well, whoa, 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 Pastor, what are you saying? I ain't, I'm not robbing Jesus. You have to be a fool to rob God. Well, listen, you may not rob, be robbing him with money, but you could be robbing him with the gift and the treasure he's placed in you of bringing life to those who are broken and far away from God. And so here you have Judas. Judas is, man, he's a part of the clan, yet not in relationship with Jesus. You can keep coming to church and coming to church, but, but you can, you're, not, you're not in relationship. You're just kind of, you're just, I'm there. And that's the, that's the danger zone for all of us. Because then this whole thing that we call church, it's really just a religious thing we do just to make ourselves feel better about what we're not doing in reality for God. We sing the songs, right? Oh, oh, to be like you, right? I give all I have just to what? Know you. I got a little tone, relax. Trip. Got a little some some. Let's all sing it. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, to be. And we're just like, <laughs> hey, can you go win some people? No, man, I'm busy right now. <laughs> we want presents, but we don't want presents anymore. I'm telling you. Let, let me read you a verse. This, is, this just wrecked me for normal, really. Such a great verse because I'm telling you, if we're not careful, we are going to be preoccupied constantly by our own stuff. And let me tell you something. Nothing wrong with stuff until the stuff derails you. And it happens to everybody, trust me. Um, and so here you have... You know what? Jesus is, is, is speaking two parables which are powerful. I always have read these verses and I always had a different interpretation of it until I started studying this. I'm like, oh my God. I know Jesus was not talking about money here. Watch this. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44 through 45. Hurry up. Hurry up. Matthew chapter 13. Look at this. This is crazy. And the reason I share this, guys, please, please get my heart today. The reason I share this is that we can't get so used to God's presence because there's some people that are just so sucked into God's presence. They want to be in God's presence all day, but so used to God's presence where you're no longer moved by God's mission. Because there's, there's the both extremes, the ones that just come in, walk out, and those that just want God's presence all day. 
<laughs> but are no longer moved by God's mission. That's what happened to Judas. I'm used to his presence. I'm always with Jesus. But he was moved by his mission. Look at this. Matthew 13, verse 44 through 45, it says, Jesus once again is talking to his disciples and he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. I love this. It's like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in the field. It's like a treasure. Everybody say treasure. treasure. It's like a treasure that a man what? Discovered. Do you know what God wants us to do? He wants us to do what little Cindy Lou did. She discovered that there was a man that was far away from her community. There was a man far away from Whoville. If not you, then who? That she looked at and said, oh, there's some treasure there. And she says, I'm sorry, and Jesus says, and so it's treasure that a man discovered hidden in the field. In his excitement, in his, everybody say excitement. Man, the church needs a little bit more excitement. You know what? I preach on other sermons, and I get the, the church loves it when I do these amazing series that really bless them. But when the moment I talk about go work, help us, Jesus. The amens, they cut by 50%. I know, because I go back and watch live stream. I'm like, dang, they dropped it by. There, we have a radar, by the way, of amens in our life. We're just like, okay, that was a good sermon today. <laughs> and, you know, when I do so winning ser sermons, like, it's like 10%, you know. It, it's pretty wild. It's amazing. Go check it out sometime. But in his excitement, look at this. In his excitement. So, so check this out. I see treasure. How did I see treasure? Well, I went to the field. I, I dug it up. Look, he says in his excitement, he hid it again, and he sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Wow. Watch this. Again, verse, verse 45. So he's now saying it. In a different angle, a different way, with the same meaning. And he says, and again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant. Come on, now I'm a merchant. On the lookout for choice pearls. I don't remember about you, uh, but I don't know about you, but I know, I know that I wasn't any pearl. I didn't even see the worth or the value of my life. I hated me. I had self-hatred for so many years. But then came a man who saw the worth. He saw the field. And as he discovered that, wow, this guy Mauricio, you know what? I know he hate. I rejected the guy who always shared Jesus with me for two years, but he kept coming. Why? He found the field. He found the field. And you know what he did? He sold everything everything you know what he sold he sold his pride of not wanting to be rejected he sold everything so many of us we have not sold we we value our insecurity we value our fear we value rejection no pastor that's not true if it wasn't true then we would be over ourselves and reaching more grinches for two years, this guy sold everything. Every time, like, hey, Mauricio, would you go to church? No, dude, what's wrong with you? I don't, I'm not a church guy. Stop it. We're just going to pray for you. Hurry up, dude. Only because I liked him. Hey, Mauricio, you want to come to our, our son? Dude, no, Larry, you already know better than that, bro. Just stop inviting me. Hey, God loves you. I don't give a rip. I don't care. Stop the whole God loves you. Stop this whole little Jesus thing, bro. That's a little girly thing. No. There is no God. I'm telling you, this was me. And there are people out there that you and I know right now, people you work with, people that you're constantly walking across in your community, in your neighborhood, family members. You know that there are certain family members that don't have Jesus. But you know what's happened to the church? We've been preoccupied with doing us. It's like that whole terminology, oh, I do me. I do me. No, you got to stop doing you. And you got to start doing him. And when you're preoccupied with, with, with insecurity, when you're preoccupied with fear, with your, when you're preoccupied with your opinion, when you're preoccupied with your ideas, 
And God is showing you land. God is showing you fields. God says, okay. You see, you have to come to a point in your life. It'll never happen. It will never happen until you come to a point in your life where you say to yourself, something needs to change in me. Something ha- I have to come to the place in my life where I say, you know what? I want more of God than I do of me. Like I really, I need more of God. Why? When you get more of God, there's less of you. When there's more of you, there's less of him. I'm telling you, it's, it's for real. Every single conversation that Jesus spoke to his disciples, all were referenced to his mission. I came to seek and save those which are lost. That was his mission. And then Jesus finishes his mission, and he says, now I want you to continue my great commission. So he puts, he invests something in us, and he says, now occupy till I come back. Because he's going to take counts. You weren't just born to be your own dream maker. You weren't just born to have your own little career. And let's just work my thing and get a house. Get your house. Get the car. Get your car. Get your white picket fence. I think that's probably outdated. But okay, get your white picket fence. Nothing wrong with that. But it is when it's no longer about God, and yet you and I claim that we are on God's mission. I'm telling you, you can be so close to God, but not be in relationship with Him. It's possible. You know, um, Felicia is one of our leaders. We had our leadership meeting yesterday. Not meeting, it was our party. Just to celebrate and thank the leaders for all their service here. And then our leaders do something for their volunteers. And Felicia, I saw her yesterday. Later, I was here late yesterday. And she said, she's like, she's like you know, Pastor, uh, I was walking down Main Street. And, um, and she said, I saw this girl. And she's like, she's like I know I was busy doing stuff. You know, trying to get the service ready for Sunday. And she said, I don't know what it was about this person, but I saw this girl and I just felt like, ah, I have to go talk to her. You see, that's, that's, the, that's the, the, the search. That's the seek, right? That's the merchant always looking for the pearls. And, and she said, and as I'm walking down Main Street, I see this girl which I call Pearl, and, and she's like, I approached her, and I just said, hey, how you doing? Is everything okay? Uh, can I help you with anything? I mean, that's kind of awkward, huh? Someone approaching, like, hey, are you okay? You, you okay? It's kind of weird, right? It's kind of strange. But when you have God's presence, you'll know when his presence is there to do a job for him. When you're all about presence, you're too full to do anything for him. And so she begins to talk to this girl. And you know, it's a trip because she tells me this story yesterday. And then, you know, so they connected. They liked each other. And and it was very cool. They had an amazing experience. And then this morning, she's like, oh, hey, pastor, by the way. You know, we we always go over our services in the morning with our team. And like, oh, yeah, by the way, um, this girl, she's uh, the girl I talked to you about. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, did you invite her to church? She's like, yeah, but you know what? She's serving in church today. I'm like, what the? I'm like, what do you, I'm like we have people in our church that have been coming for years and they ain't even serving. How'd this happen? Talk about a miracle. From one day, Main Street, to that, because this morning, I see this girl coming out of nowhere just like, like, whoo, and grabbing boxes and, whoo, God. And I'm like, yeah, that's the girl. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. So, okay, tell me the story again, Felicia. <laughs> so, so, what, what ha- so at the 8 a.m., I'm like, I don't know if this girl's here right now. If you left, you just came, and then we scared you. I don't know if you're still here. And she was here, and I said, Shannon, well, I called her, and I'm like, what's your name? She's like, Shannon. So, Shannon, she's like, 
I asked her, I'm like, can you stay for the 10 and just kind of just share a little bit of what, what you felt? And she's like, yeah, sure, I'll stay. So Shannon, can you come up? This is the girl that was touched yesterday on Main Street. Give it up for Shannon. Come on up, Shannon. I try not to embarrass people, but it happens. So Shannon, let me give you this real quick. So how did you feel? I mean, here you're walking on Main Street. You, you work at the theater up the street. You're just minding your own business. You're walking. What happened? Like, I, I love what you said at the 8 a.m. It, it was so genuine, so authentic. Just share what you shared again. Just what, what did you feel when you had this stranger straight up just approach you? Don't even know this girl. What, what was happening? Well, I've been struggling with PTSD and depression for years. And it was very severe yesterday. And I don't know why, but I decided to walk by the church because I always do after rehearsals. And there was a party there or something. I think you said it was like a meeting. Yeah. And everybody was just so happy. And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> you know, just kind of cruising around there by. And then she saw this look in my face of like, I need help. And so she just genuinely approached me like out of her own kindness. And that, you know, she's like, hey, are you okay? And I've never had that before. Nobody like ever stopped me. No I'm one's like, ever done that? Like, you're talking to me? <laughs> you know, I never thought someone would actually take the time and just say, hey, are you really okay? Because I always put a smile on my face. I'm very happy to live every day now because I've been suicidal in the past. And just the fact that someone was like, generally there to help someone, just, I don't even know how to explain. Like, it opened my heart. And, you know, she, hmm, I don't even know how to, I don't know how to put this in correct wording. It's, it's okay. You're doing amazing. It, it really, uh, it really did help me out, and I, yeah, basically, I don't even know what to say. I'm just That's really okay. appreciative, and That's I just awesome. feel so welcome to be here. That's awesome. <laughs> Shannon, and, and thank, thank you. you. So this young girl, Felicia, which is our, our, our media leader, worship pastor here as well, went out of her way to love on you, and then today... Thank you for loving back on us and helping us with our production today. That's so sweet of you. Thank you so much. Give her one more big hand. Thank you so much. That's God's field. And the treasure is Jesus in her. We don't value people if we want to really be honest. We don't honestly value. We value people earth's way but we don't value people kingdom way because kingdom way is we seek and we save those who are lost one thing shannon said and uh at the eight which it it was like a nail going through my heart in a good way she said somebody actually recognized that i exist I'm like, wow. People are walking and don't feel they exist. Says, no one has ever, you heard her say, listen, I didn't prep her. She said it. No one has ever done this for me. I wonder who you keep walking by every day that no one has ever done that for. Yet you are so close to Jesus, but maybe not such a great relationship with Jesus where you're on mission for Jesus, but preoccupied with you. Sell everything to buy the field. You know what? Why don't you sell your insecurity? You're rich with it. Why don't you sell your fears? You abound in it. Why don't you sell your pride? You roll with it. Why don't you sell your insignificance that you keep thinking of and realize when Jesus, listen, when Jesus died on a cross, you know what he did? His father sold everything. Sold everything to get you back. Doesn't the Bible said, and you were bought at a price? And you were bought at a price. 
God said, they're in debt to sin. You're a slave to Satan. And God said, I don't like that. He saw the field. Look at 1 Corinthians 3.9. Look at 1 Corinthians 3.9. For we are God's fellow what? But look at this. But before you're his fellow worker, you are God's field. There's, there's the confirmation of the scripture. I'm his field. And Jesus is the treasure. Sell everything. Sell everything you have. Be a sellout for God. Be a sellout for God. God, I want all of you. I sell it all. I, I sell my pride. I sell my insecurities. I sell out my fears. I sell out rejection. I sell it all for what? To go and buy the field. God needs some sellouts for him. God needs a church that says, yes, God, I'm a worker with you. And stop being so preoccupied with you. That's what Christmas has become. Watch the movie tonight. Go home. Watch the Grinch. They were all preoccupied with self. Finding the best gift. Going to the next party. Having the best of the best. Having the best Christmas tree. Having the best decorations of the home. We're preoccupied with this earth. And not, not realizing that Christmas has been misinterpreted even by the church. If not you, then who is going to reach the people you work with? Who? Who's going to do that? God saved you to reach someone. He wants you to sell everything, everything. Sell it all. And yes, let it cost you your, your pride. And yes, you're going to make mistakes while you're sharing your faith. You're going to say some really stupid stuff that's not even biblical. You are. I told, I have a lot of cop friends. I told one of, one of he was like my best friend at the time when I just got saved. Great friend. And, and I, I misinterpreted the Bible. You know, I, was, I, was, I had some religiosity in me. And, 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 his, and his grandma was a Catholic and he said, hey, is my grandma going to, and he lo- his grandma was like, he loved his grandma more than his own mom. And, and, he sa- and we were talking about his grandma being a Catholic and, you know, because Catholics tend to worship the Virgin Mary. And I come from a Catholic background, so I know that sometimes there's a misinterpretation of, of our real relationship with Jesus, etc. I'm not going to get into that. But I was so stupid in my conversation. But, hey, God loves stupid. And I said to him, I'm like, dude, guess what? Old people burn in hell, too. And, he, and he's, like, he's, like, he's, like, he's like, well, he, po- he stopped his car. We're in his patrol car. I was rolling deep. My arm came up the window. I'm like, uh-oh. He's, he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, dude. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, dude, your grandma needs to know Jesus, not the virgin. It's Jesus. She's going to hell. Old people burn too. And he's like, that didn't go well. But how many know that God makes up for stupid? He does. And you know what keeps us from sharing our faith? Looking stupid. Sell out your stupidity and say, I'm going to sell that. I'm going to sell everything. And I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to buy it all. I'm going to go. I'm gonna, I want the treasure in the field. I want the treasure, Jesus, in this field right here. And in this field, and I want the treasure in this field, and I want the treasure in this field, and I want the treasure in this field, and I want the treasure. But I got to sell everything. Every, I'm going to sell it all. Why? Because I, I want the treasure in you. I want the treasure in you. That's true Christianity. Anything else is fluff. Stand to your feet. lift your hands to heaven just I want you to have a moment and if you've misinterpreted your walk with God if you have misinterpreted your desire for God come on let's not just sing songs oh to be like you give all I have to know you no now let it be your revelation and let it be your reality 
I'm willing to give it all, to sell it all, just to know you, Jesus, just to be like you, man, to reach another Shannon. Father, give me the spirit of excitement to want to sell it all to get that field, to get the treasure in the field. And his name is Jesus. Lord, renew a steadfast spirit in me, Father. Clean my heart, Father. Give me the true interpretation of this season called Christmas. It's Christ must. I will bring Christ. I will bring his presence to my work. I will bring his presence to my friendships. I will bring his presence to wherever I go, whether it's a coffee shop, a mall. God, show me. As a merchant, show me where to look, Father, where the pearls are, where the treasure is, and I will go in the name of Jesus. Say it to him, I'll go, Lord. No, I want you to mean to say, Lord, I'll go. I'll go. I'll sell it all. I'll I'll, I'll sell myself out. You got to get to that place. And so, Father, you see their hands. I thank you for personal conviction. I thank you that today they will have eyes to see what you want to show them. That they would all have ears to hear what you want them to hear. And that they would have a heart ready to receive what you want to give them. Jesus, we will occupy until you come. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.